Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of a Type B chopper in MATLAB. So it is also referred to as a second quadrant chopper and this is a circuit diagram of a Type B chopper. So the reason why it is called a second quadrant chopper is very simple. If you see with respect to voltage and current, the voltage will always remain positive and the current will always remain negative. As a result, it is called as Type uh, second quadrant operation uh, chopper. So uh, how do we justify that the voltage is always positive and current is always negative? Initially, if you are assuming that the switch is turned off, turned on, consequently the diode is reversed bias because supply will reverse bias the diode and it will be open. So, whatever is the EMF E here, it will uh, start storing the energy in the inductor and current will flow in this direction, upward direction. That is opposite with respect to the initial direction uh, that is assumed, I out. So, uh, the current will store across the inductor and consequently it flows here. V out will be zero because short circuited with respect to chopper since it conducts. And consequently, when the chopper is open uh, it is turned off the energy stored in the inductor will flow forward bias the diode and it will flow from the load to the source since the current will always be from the load to the source direction uh, that is opposite with respect to our initial uh, assumption so it is always negative and voltage will be zero or it will be equal to v out that is pos uh, positive because it will be equal to uh, the emf drops and uh, the voltage across the inductor when it is uh, not conducting so as a result v out will always be positive and current I out will be negative. So once this concept, basic understanding of this concept is understood, we will uh, get started with our simulation in MATLAB. So let's go. All right, here we are. So go to a Simulink Library Browser and search for PowerView, which is the most important block for the simulation to take place. So add this block. Apart from that, we also want voltage measurement block, current measurement block. Add both of the blocks to our model. Uh, and once that is done, we will be requiring a DC voltage source. So search for DC voltage source. Choose the ones that are there in black because uh, with respect to power electronic application, we'll use them. Uh, once that is done, uh, we will be requiring uh, a MOSFET switch. So search for MOSFET and uh, you will be getting right at the bottom scroll a little down uh, at this block we also require a diode so search for diode you will be getting it uh, right at the bottom scroll a little down choose the diode here uh, and once this is also added we require a pulse generator block uh, in order to trigger the MOSFET in a particular fashion so it will be uh, available right at the top over here so add this block as well once this is also added we will be requiring a series RLC branch later on we can convert it uh, in a form that is suitable according to our requirement so add this block um, and we require a scope in order to see how the waveform looks like so search for scope and add that block as well so we have added all the blocks that are required with respect to our circuit so we will be placing them in appropriate positions so that uh, we can get started with our circuit connection um, the ammeter is generally connected at the load end and power give block is placed in the top so first up uh, rotate this and uh, disable the measurement uh, port for both the diode and MOSFET because we are not using them so uh, once we disable them rotate this control R uh, according to our circuit connection and ensure that the MOSFET is placed in this direction that is so should be in the downward direction according to our circuit connection if you go wrong here consequently our circuit connection goes wrong so be very careful with respect to this and once this is done uh, we will be connecting uh, uh, the load uh, we'll be basically using an inductive load uh, with the default value of 1 milli henry um, and we also require another uh, battery at the load terminal so control c control v at this point and connect it in this particular fashion so once this is done we will be connecting ammeter across the load terminal over here and uh, give it to this particular point so uh, we will be connecting uh, the gate terminals to the mosfet in this particular fashion the supply voltage that we will be choosing is 24 volt select that and the load voltage that we're choosing is 12 volt just half of the supply voltage we can try it for different values as well um, if you, in case you're going for 36 or greater than 24 supply voltage consequently you'll be getting a steady waveform uh, at the output terminals but i want to show you where it gets clamped at zero and that's the reason why i'm choosing this value so once this is done uh, I will be connecting the ammeter uh to the scope before that we'll connect the voltmeter across the load as well and then i'll give it to scope uh, in this particular fashion so uh, connect it to the scope uh, connect the ammeter to the scope as well 
and uh, in case you would like to see how the pulses look like you can connect it uh, directly to the pulse generator block from uh, this point here in this particular fashion so once all of these are done double click on the pulse generator block um, choose the amplitude to be to equal to 10 uh, just for you to see the waveform clearly you can choose any value for that matter i'll be choosing the time period to be equal to 0 0.02 seconds uh, that is basically 1 by 50 is equal to 0 0.02 uh, for one complete cycle based on that so it doesn't matter if you change the uh, time period as well uh, in this case i'll be choosing uh, the pulse width to be approximately equal to 60 so 60 percent of the duration it should be turned on and 40 percent it should be turned off so i'm randomly choosing this you can try it for different values as well uh, it is not going to matter with respect to the output click on ok and once that is done uh, i'll be choosing uh, the simulation time to be equal to one second because these are static loads so we have entered all the parameters and we have connected across uh, with respect to our circuit uh, so now we'll be clicking on run so it does take some time to compile and once that is done we'll be double clicking on the scope so uh, we will be seeing the waveform in this particular fashion uh, go to this block and uh, separate them uh, using this particular feature where you can see them individually um, and we can zoom them as well by uh, using this particular uh, feature here so zoom it uh, so that we'll be able to clearly see how the waveform looks like if you carefully observe over here uh, the voltage is always positive and it gets clamped at this point and always becomes po in the positive direction and the current goes in the negative direction and it never comes to positive that is it always uh, becomes equal to zero at some point and it still continues so based on the inductor value it will uh, be decided and these are the pulses that are produced so since the voltage is always positive and current is always negative we are getting a proof so with respect to uh, the output waveform based on this only we will be saying it is a type b chopper that is also referred to as second quadrant chopper i hope you have a clear understanding of how to simulate this in MATLAB. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and uh, if you like this video, please do like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Please do keep supporting. Thank you.